Bachelor Season 23, Week 5 Recap, That Steamy First Kiss and That Awkward Goodbye. Because she's been there and done that, literally. Former Bachelor contestant Tear Fountain Ashley Iaconetti is recapping the season of The Bachelor for Cosmopolitan. With insider insight as well as a clear eye for what's going down both in front of and behind the cameras, read on for her thoughts. There are four main things to discuss this week, Heather's first kiss, Eliza's bizarre exit, Cassie's chemistry, and the Nicole V. And Yika drama. I thought Heather's first kiss was magical, and I was so proud of her for looking like she knew what she was doing during it. Colton did a great job too. I loved that he took command and made it as non-awkward as humanly possible. BTW, that hands-to-the-face move was so good because A, it's that a sexy move, and B, it shielded her face from the camera just in case it got sloppy. But it didn't. Listen, I don't care if the date played up the corniness with all the close-ups on their lips and the fireworks. All I care about was that the build-up to the kiss made me feel like I was living it and or watching a truly great rom-com. My anxiety watching it was even more heightened because United Airlines Wi-Fi had me watching this episode in 10-second intervals. Heather is never going to regret waiting until 23 to get her first kiss. She had her first kiss with The Bachelor under fireworks in Thailand. Come on. Side note, I did. It was weird that they got into the conversation about her eight-month-long kiss-less relationship because that wasn't a romantic relationship. It was Heather and the producer's effort to make her look a little less inexperienced than she actually is. I think it made people more confused as to why she hasn't kissed anyone until 23. I think people would get it if she was like, hey, I was never a partier, so I never had a drunken kiss at a party, and I've never been on a date with anyone I had the desire to kiss. K. Eliza's exit was mind-boggling to me. She started the night out being upset because she was feeling so much for Colton, but not getting enough time with him to satisfy her emotional needs. That's definitely a common frustration when you're a cast member The Bachelor. Every Bachelor viewer knows once you get a one-on-one -on -one date you won't be having one again for a while, most likely not until everyone else has had one. Had Eli's never watched the show before? It seemed odd that she could even hope her name would be on that date car two episodes after her date. Of course she has every right and kind of should be annoyed when someone else gets a date over her. I never understood how the girls in the house at this point could be so thick, smiley, and excited for another girl to get alone time with the man they have feelings for. That's not genuine. I get that they're trying to be supportive, and maybe these women are truly better people than me, but I always felt like, if you're smiling when someone else is getting his attention and affection, you must not actually be that into him. What I find confusing about this entire Eli's situation is that her frustration about lack of time evolved into her wanting to leave. She felt like everything was so perfect between them, and she wanted more, but then she left. That strategy equals zero time. This just seemed like a self-sabotage to me. She kept saying she wished something was wrong between them or that he would say they're better off as friends, maybe she's the kind of girl who looks for an out when things are going well because she's scared. I get her concern about not feeling comfortable getting engaged after so little alone time and I get. But to leave when you still have so much time left and that's what you're craving, that just doesn't make sense. Maybe she was uncomfortable with the process of sharing a man.